Well, it's huge. They have a butcher shop. I'm not going to buy any more steak for a while. All right, so I'll buy some. Sean, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hi. You calling in? Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, did you know that I dialed into the last meeting? Into the committee meeting? Yes. Uh, I, I wasn't by the com uh, computer, so I was in the car, and I dialed in, and I listened. But there was nothing much that I wanted to comment on, so I didn't. <laughs> um, no, I don't know that we knew. I mean, I don't know that I knew you were there otherwise because you, it just comes up with a 9173 star, 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 oh, zero, you know, oh, 04 number. So that doesn't identify you. And if you didn't say anything, but but it wasn't a regular board meeting, so there was no official attendance. Oh, there wasn't. All right, because that was the one with uh, um, NYSEM presented and uh, the police about, you know, the civil review board and all that other nonsense that, you know, she didn't give the kind of information that was actually valuable, um, And but I decided not to challenge it, so I just let it go. Okay. But I'm going to be listening in tonight, and... Uh, but I'm going to star six it for now, so I okay. don't disturb anything. Good deal. I mean, I already know you're not buying any more steak. You already know I'm what? Not buying any more steak. <laughs> you heard that. Oh, we went to a food bazaar a couple of days ago, and I got a, 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 a porterhouse steak that was almost as good as a good steakhouse. Not quite, yeah. but almost. Wonderful. Good to know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute myself for a second because I got other messages coming in my phone. I'm getting a little bombarded. Okay, have a good meeting. Bye. Thanks.
But I never put the weight in, and I already asked for 8.6. You better pick something else. I may have pressed something strange. If so, I apologize. Everyone's good. Hi, this is Mordechai Huzarski. I'm I'm dialed in on the phone. All right, got you, Morty. Thanks. Thanks. Just didn't want you to think there's a strange number hanging out here. <laughs> I just I still have trouble with these WebExes on my phone because of the security protocols on my phone from my company. So I, I have to dial in. Okay, we got you. Thanks for being here. Uh, Sean, I also want to note I'm here. Uh, I'm having problems turning on my camera. I was just on a Zoom call previously, and for whatever reason, WebEx has dis disabled my ability to turn on my camera. All right, Ed, gotcha. Um, did you try? Did you try to close your browser and then and then come back in? Uh, I can give that a shot. If you want, otherwise, we know you're really there. It's not just your name. And hi, Steve. We're I, I think we're waiting for other DOT representatives to be there here, but um, I am guessing that Diana is Diana Soriano from uh, from DOT. Is that right, Diana? Is that you? Yep. Okay. Hi. Hello, Elvin. I've been thinking about you. Okay, good thoughts. Totally, a hundred percent. I got a couple of things I'm going to send your way to share because sharing is caring. Sorry, no luck. Okay. Um, then Ed and, and but Ed, you can see everything, yeah. Yes, I can see and hear everyone. All right. Um. Ed and Steve, let me know when you are ready to begin. But Diana, do you, who is making the first presentation on the city bike um, installations? And is that person here? Uh, 
Lisa um, Morasco, and, and forgive me, Lisa, if, if you're um, online and I'm mispronouncing your name, but uh, sh I will send her a quick message to um, confirm. She's on. She told me that you know she would be presenting today, so okay. I will send her a quick message. Okay. Thanks. I hope Lucky puts in a vote too. Welcome back, Victoria. Thank you. Hi. Um, Lisa's here if we wanted to get started. Uh, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Then let me hang on just one second. I'm going to start recording. All set. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Community Board 14 Transportation Committee meeting. It's uh, March 8th, 2023. Uh, we have a very uh, bike heavy uh, agenda for today um, and we'd like to welcome uh, New York City Department of Transportation. Uh, first off, we're going to have uh, a report on the planning process and draft plans for speed bike phase three station locations within our uh, community board district uh, and uh, presenting that will be Lisa Morasco from DOT. Uh, so, Ms. Morasco, if you wouldn't mind taking it away. Hi. Um, can everyone hear me? I had to call in. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I am going to. Great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yes. Back. I haven't used this before, and it's kind of wonky. Can everyone see my screen? It's coming up for a second, but not anymore. Okay, give me. I can't actually, for some reason. Oh, here we go. Let me do that. Can everyone see that? Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, my name is Lisa Morasco. I'm a senior planner on the bike share and share mobility team here at DOT. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to walk through um, a few different parts of the planning process, um, a little bit of overview of City Bike, um, and then go through the actual draft. Plan um, of, of stations here in CB14. Um, so, really quick overview Bike Share is a dense network of, um, you know, rented bicycles. Um, it really increases mobility um, in communities, really convenient for trips that are maybe just a little too far to walk, um, but a little too short for the subway or a taxi. It uh, really complements uh, existing infrastructure. Um, really first and last mile options to get uh, folks a little closer to their final destination. Um, these, these systems run 24 seven. Um, you don't need to worry about storage or maintenance um, either. Um, City Bike is New York City's bike share system. It's a public private partnership. Um, so DOT is responsible for system planning and outreach. Uh, Lyft is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. It's funded by sponsors sponsorships and memberships. Um, it's a station-based system, so it can be in the roadbed or the sidewalk. They're not hardwired into the ground. These are solar-powered. Um, station-based also provides um, reliability and consistency for um, members and users of the program. Um, a little bit of a history lesson. We're about to turn 10 
Uh, we launched in 2013 with 330 stations, 6,000 bikes. Um, starting in 2015, um, in this sort of royal blue, um, if you will, um, the phase two doubled the service area, expanded into Queens for the first time. Um, and then starting in 2019, we again started our phase three expansion, which doubled the service area uh, once again. Um, so the program has been tremendously successful. We've seen over 170 million trips to date. Um, on, on average, we're seeing about 100,000 um, trips on our peak riding months, um, and we have about 160,000 annual numbers. A little bit about pricing. We have two primary memberships, um, casual and annual. Casuals are 30-minute rides. You can do that in the form of a single ride or a day pass, which includes unlimited 30-minute rides in a 24-hour period. Um, annual memberships are 45-minute rides, um, unlimited um, throughout that year. We also offer two different types of reduced fare memberships. One is for NYCHA residents and SNAP recipients. Uh, that's $5 a month, no annual commitment. And then for CDCU members, $5 a month with an annual commitment. Um, we do have a local one here in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Federal Credit Union, um, for reference. Um, so a little bit about our equity efforts. Um, one I just men mentioned is our reduced fare uh, bike share program. Um, we also lift has a community grants program. Um, they're actually seeking grantees right now. So if you know a community-based organization um, that might benefit from adding city bike into their programming, whether it's like rides or can enhance um, any, any bit of their programming, um, feel free to connect us and we can um, share that information. Um, we also do have an equity advisory board um, that helps promote um, all of these equity efforts um, and advises as well. Um, so DOT promotes safe cycling in a variety of ways. Um, we do helmet light cell giveaways, safety awareness classes. Um, we also do display sort of the key rules of the road on all of the kiosks, as well as all of the baskets, as you can see here. Um, so now I'm going to go a bit into the planning process. There are three, four main components. Um, first is the station siting. Then we'll talk about outreach and that how that sort of fuels the draft plan uh, creation and then final steps after that. Um, so station siting, it's, it's a very dense network and this is really what's made the program so successful um, to have sort of an even spread throughout the service area. And really what we want to ensure is that once you're inside the service area, you're no more than a three to five minute walk from a station. Um, some of the considerations um, that we have are hydrants, um, you know, proximity to them, utilities, um, ADA accessibility, um, and those are just a few of the many factors that we take into consideration when selecting an actual site. Um, so a bit about um, the public outreach process. Um, we started this in the fall of 2022 um, with the street ambassador um, sessions. Um, so we basically set up wherever you know folks in the neighborhood are already um, going to. This is outside of a subway station. We essentially solicit feedback from them. We ask them, where do you think a station should go? Where's the site that might not be so great for a station? We also had a interactive feedback portal um, where folks did the same thing, they dropped a pin, they gave us a little bit of comments about why, why this location would either be good or, or not so great for a station. We held a variety of stakeholder meetings and we received about a little over 600 comments um, for this area in Brooklyn, which includes parts of CV17 as well. Um, so this um, is sort of uh, a synthesis of all of the feedback that we received uh, in the community. Um, we also do have a variety of, of lift operational considerations um, that might eliminate a site here and there. Um, and then we really use this map um, to sort of guide the selection process, where, which we're going to get to in a couple of slides. Um, but we're sort of at the, the place right now where we're presenting uh, to the community boards. We'll post um, all of this information for you uh, online tomorrow. Um, so once we present this draft plan, we give about a month um, long period for feedback. Um, during this period, we're also going to be doing technical screening and coordination. We're going to notify every adjacent property owner. Um, we'll come back to the boards um, and do an updated plan, and then we'll install the stations, and then we'll continue to do outreach monitoring 
uh, and adjustments. Um, so I'm going to then dive into sort of the meat of the presentation, the draft plan. Um, so we have about 20 stations um, that are going to go here in CB14. I have a couple of maps that are going to zoom in a little bit closer, um, but this is the larger overview. Again, we're going to post this map um, online tomorrow. Um, so this first slide, um, I'm going to kind of quickly give you an overview of what these symbols mean. Um, so the triangles are going to represent sidewalk stations, um, and the letters inside of those are going to represent the cardinal side of the street. Um, so for example, this, this site here is going to be uh, on the south side of Caton Street um, at St. Paul's Place. Um, and that's the sidewalk site. I'm going to give, oh, I did also want to flag. Um, there are two locations that we're coordinating with Park um, that are going to be um, along Parkside, uh, one here in the plaza and then one further down um, Parkside as well. Um, so these are the general locations, but we'll share those details with the board uh, once we finalize coordination uh, with Park. But I'll give folks a few minutes to kind of digest um, what's on this slide. We're seeing six sites um, that are a proposed two that are still TBD, um, and then I can move to the next slide uh, just in a few moments. Okay, this next slide um, has about 12 sites um, on here. Again, squares are going to represent roadbed sites, triangles are sidewalks. Um, and the letter inside is going to denote the cardinal side of the street. That's sort of the end of my presentation. I'm happy to obviously go back and, you know, if you guys have further questions uh, or need further clarifications about, you know, any of the planning process or any of the locations um, shown here on the map, happy to do that as well. Thank you for that. Um, really appreciate the presentation. Um, if anyone has questions, you can use the raise hand function. Uh, there is a uh, question in the chat. Uh, someone was wondering where online the map will be posted. Um, it'll be posted on our bike share website. Um, I can give a link to Diana um, who can share it with the board uh, tomorrow morning. Great. And then we'll try to post that on our on our website. That will be great. Um, before we get to uh, questions, I just wanted to Acknowledge uh, some folks who are here. Uh, Sharon Fuchs from uh, Senator Felder's office is in attendance. Thank you for thank you for coming to this meeting. And I believe Detective Nuzzi from the 70th Precinct is here. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and with that, I think we can go to questions. Uh, Liz Denny's, uh, I believe you have your hand up. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing I've noticed, because um, I'm lucky to be just at the edge of the current city bike service, um, is that when you're at the very edge, um, there's a, it, it's hard to get a spot to dock at night, and it's hard to find a bike kind of later in the morning. Um, and I had noticed on this this map that um, Cortelli Road actually had very few um, stops and or very few planned um, docks and. Um, being at the edge of the network and also a very popular commercial street, I was wondering if there was any consideration to perhaps um, include at least one more station somewhere along there, um, just to you know try to help with the fact that we know that rebalancing is kind of a an issue here. Um, and on the other, and just like one a piece of really positive feedback I wanted to note is just there's I really like that train stations um, have. City bike docks here that's not always been done in other parts nearby to our neighborhood and it's like really, really, really helpful for making that last mile trip. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to know if there's any additional information on, um, you know, issues with the edge of the network at Cortelli Road. Um, if there's a, a timeline for a planned expansion beyond that, because um, I know that wasn't in the map. 
Thanks for that, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I think, you know, along the edges of our network, we see that consistently, no matter where you are. Um, so certainly we'd want to like beef up, um, you know, those, those stations. Um, at the moment, we don't have any plans, um, but what we can do is take that feedback and look to see if there's any additional opportunities um, to place some station based on your comments here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, I see uh, committee co-chair Ed Sen has his hand up. Ed, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was wondering if we could pull back uh, the map. I, I noticed that um, there are a number of stops along Beverly. Um, I, I just wanted to take a closer look at that. Um, and if I could turn on my camera, I would, but I, and you would notice behind me, I have three bikes typically. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, it's, I, I just want to note that Beverly is a shared bike lane with uh, a lot of vehicular traffic. And um, I, I just, I'm slightly concerned just in terms of the amount of stations that are that go along Beverly. Um, I don't know, there's been discussion within like Vision Zero. I, I know we have had uh, traffic fatalities in, within the district, um, specifically along uh, Parkside Avenue um, and in relation to Vision Zero internally and what those uh, discussions look like. So um, yeah, I, I'm just, given that Beverly Road is a, a shared uh, lane with vehicular traffic, uh, it's, I just don't know how many, like, if that, if having six potential stations there makes the most sense, um, maybe moving some to uh, further down to Cortellu would would be advisable, um, just given that the street is maybe a little bit wider. Um, but uh, the, that's just my uh, thoughts. And thank you for uh, bringing the uh, the map back up. Sure. Um, so what I'd say about, uh, you know, more generally like safety, what we find um, is their safety in numbers, the more riders that you have um, on the streets, um, the safer that they become generally. Um, and with Beverly Road, as you know, if you, as you can notice, the grid here is a little, um, it's a bit odd shaped. <laughs> and so we really wanted to make sure that, you know, stations were evenly spaced. I know down here on Cortelli Road, um, there might not be as many, um, but what we can go ahead and do um, based on this feedback, I know that you said you want more stations along Cortell U, um, we can look at potentially shifting, um, you know, some of the some of these sites um, on Beverly um, over to Cortell U um, and see what we can do about network spread. Um, but I think we're also going to see folks um, wanting to get access to Beverly Road. Um, so, you know, not all of these are placed exactly on, on Beverly, but provide access to it, um, is what I'd say about, you know, this sort of like peppering along Beverly here. Um, I'd also flag that this is a pretty residential neighborhood, so a lot of curb cuts um, prevent uh, location placement um, in certain areas. It, it was a bit challenging to identify um, viable options here, um, but we'll certainly take a look. Um, and see if there's anything we can do to beef up Long Cortell U and potentially shift away from Beverly. Um, thank you for that. And, and respectfully, I, I do have to disagree. Um, just given the shared bike lanes uh, on Beverly, I, I foresee more bike usage there. I, I foresee uh, cyclists potentially using the narrow sidewalks uh, rather than uh, riding along uh, with traffic. Um, Steve, you can uh, move on. Sorry. Uh, hi, this is this is Mordecai Zarski. Can I ask just one question regarding specifically that because uh, since Beverly Road was brought up, um, has there, was there a traffic study done to determine the flow of traffic along these routes as far as car the number of cars on a daily basis or that at peak times versus non-peak times before determining where to create placements? Uh, as, a, as a frequent person who has an office on the corner of Beverly Road and East 16th, um, and a cyclist as well, Beverly Road is a is a traffic nightmare from early in the morning till late at night. I don't, I don't. It's one of the worst travel thoroughfares. It, it's constantly backed up with cars. Was there any kind of study done to determine that this is the best and, and, and the most viable option for location? 
we don't do traffic studies per se to look at like volumes. We certainly work with several units within our agency, like specifically, you know, freight management, people who um, manage curbside um, parking. Um, so there are a lot of eyes that go onto this map and review the location, um, but we wouldn't do um, like a larger traffic analysis here. Um, essentially what this network does once you're in the service area, we want to make sure that there is an even spread um, in communities to make sure that there's always a bike or a dock wherever you're starting from and wherever um, you're going to. Um, so that's sort of the general principle um, of it. But we do, it, it sounds like people have um, some concerns here about Beverly Road specifically, um, and we'll take that feedback you know, into consideration and look at, um, you know, either studies that have been done, we'll review it with more internal units and look at potentially shifting away as well. Great, thank you. Um, District Manager Sean Campbell, you uh, wanted to raise something? Hi, thanks. I, um, first of all, just want to uh, express um, some relief and, and um, pleasure that the, Bike lane, that the new bike stations on Caton will be sidewalk stations. And I did um, speak with um, Councilmember Rita Joseph's um, staff today um, and understand that there's uh, been an agreement to finally um, take the bike stations that are currently on Caton, um, which is a truck route, and get them out of the street. Um, and so I'm eager to hear where they'll be moved to um, now that the agreement has finally been reached, but but um, that is with some relief and um, appreciate that there's no plans to continue to install um, street stations on truck routes. That's good news. But I also wanted to ask, and it's all it's on. I'm curious, but it's also on behalf of one of our board members who couldn't be here this evening. Um, to what extent are these um, locations being coordinated with the bus redesign? And I'd add with the uh, with bike network expansions because we're talking a lot about Beverly Road, and right now. Uh, the proposal is to move the BM one, two, and three buses off of Cortelia Road and onto Beverly Road, which would make it, you know, a an express bus street um, as well as the bike station installations. Um, and I, I just wonder what interaction you foresee with that. Thanks. Sure. Um, so with the express bus, um, you know, the the redesign of of you know the bus routes here. We do have a, an internal unit that helps with that um, transit development. Um, so we do coordinate with them. They do review these uh, plans as well. Um, we haven't gotten any flags from them, but we can certainly highlight uh, the concern that you raised to see if there's um, any potential conflicts that we foresee. Um, and in terms of the two sites on Caton, um, I know that those two locations were discussed um, and there's potential to ship them, but I don't, I'm not, like super familiar with the details of where those relocations are happening. I just know those discussions are ongoing. Um, but yeah, we that that is something that we have a team member working on here. Great, thank you. Um, Mehdi, you have your hand up? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to say thank you for uh, your presentation and I'm glad to see that the connection with the metro stations is considered here. Um, I echo what um, Lisa said about um, the uh, edge effect of the bike the bike stations. Um, we have we have we see that um, condition basically um, not any dock being available in at the south edge of the network. Um, and I also noticed that you have um, one station at Cortel U where the farmer's market happening um, across the school, that one. So- the uh, Farmer's market happens that, on sidewalk specifically on the south side? No, on, on the north side, on the north okay. side. Which, I think is a, is a good spot for a station. Uh, but the question that I have is, um, do you know how many docks you're going to have in the, each of these stations? Because that would be a, a factor for distribution 
and a factor for uh, availability of bikes. Um, that's one question that comes to my mind. Good point that um, um, was raised about the connection with the network um, of bike lanes. And I wonder if you uh, work along with the other people at UOT to uh, basically coordinate with them about the um, bike lane expansions. And if that can happen, that would be great. And um, if, for example, there is no bike lane um, happening in, 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 for example, in Beverly, uh, we know that Beverly Road is, you know, my my colleagues raised the point that it is uh, has a um, heavy traffic. But um, is there any plan, for example, for slowing down the traffic? You know, the maybe the speed limit. Um, you know, working with some of those issues. Um, so to address that last question, um, I'm not aware of any plans to slow down traffic along Beverly, but I can surely pass along um, some of that. Those like the, the larger comments and concerns that I've heard here uh, today with some other incidents. Um, as far as coordinating uh, with the bike program, um, yes, yeah, we, we meet with them regularly. Um, I don't think that CB14 uh, had a, a ton of overlap with their 2023 plans and our 2023 plans. Um, but what ends up happening is as new projects, um, bike, bike lane projects get installed, um, we do coordinate with them and we'll shift locations, um, make adjustments to accommodate that new infrastructure um, so that we're making sure that our infrastructure uh, and the bike lanes, how people uh, use the streets to get around um, complement one another as well. Um, so we're always like, we are always in an ongoing conversation um, with bikes to see how we can better collaborate um, here um, on those. Um, and then these edge effects, like in terms of like the station sizes, um, we're seeing about a 22 uh, station average, a dock average. Um, some stations are gonna be a little bit larger. So think about um, locations that are a little bit closer to uh, subway access, those are gonna be a bit bigger um, where, where some are in front of like, you know, more residential communities, those are gonna be a little bit smaller, um, but the station sizes, um, you know, vary throughout the area. Yeah. Um, I see uh, Naomi, you have your hand up. I'm not sure if that's a uh, board member, Naomi Lipnick or a different Naomi, but you can go ahead. Oh, I'm not a board member, just a community member. Um, I'm just okay. curious um, if there's any possibility of this, the network expanding further south to Newkirk, which is the next express stop on the train and also part of the neighborhood. Thanks. Uh, response to that? I think you might be on mute. Lisa, did you get the question? You might have lost her. Um, I'll send her a quick message. So I'm still seeing her on the list. Yeah, she's unmuted. Yeah, just seeing her camera it looks like her phone audio, which you called into, doesn't uh, isn't working. I hope she comes back soon before I start saying things about Newkirk Plaza and DOT in general. I just sent her a message. Uh, and if we're not able to get an answer to that question, it's certainly something we could bring back to DOT or, you know, bring back to you the answer as to when the next phase oh there you are hi lisa the the question can we hear you yet 
Cita lagi. Boom, you're done. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I'm um, sorry, I called back in. I'm, I don't know how that happened. Um, so, sorry, I lost where we were. Um, I think somebody had asked about plans for further expansion of the program south. Um, I, I think DOT would love to expand the program to all New Yorkers, um, but we have no, no plans, solid plans right now um, about expanding any further. I think as soon as we, you know, if those details come available, um, we will happily share them um, with community members. Great, thank you. Um, you said you had your hand up. Go ahead. Sorry if I caught you while eating. Oh, did you call me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for presenting on this. I really, really appreciate taking the time. <clears throat> One, I actually think the plan. So far, it's actually uh, pretty great. I'm glad the DOT is doing this. I do disagree with some of the comments made around concerns around Beverly, um, because I can see the the reasoning you made in your map here. Um, but Sean did make a really good point that I want to emphasize that it would be really difficult. I know because I ride Beverly, and Cortel, you on bike when the when the weather works uh, works well works with me. Um, it would be really difficult to have to ride alongside buses, and so if we're now pulling them through some of these streets. Um, it can it can both be very dangerous and very and a big um, inhibitor, I guess, for people taking a ride there. With that said, I totally understand the reasoning because there's that like triangular layout of it, um, and you know I I support it fully. Um, I do I do um, wish there was probably one more, uh, but I'm for you know more more stations the better, which everyone may not agree. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks for your comments. Well. We'll note, um, oh, note I'm so sorry. Up. My, my 1 question was, once the station does go in, let's say you, you listen, you put in these stations, how long does it take? Um, before, let's say we realize the station was a mistake or you need more bikes at that same station. What's that process and how long does it take? Thank you. Um, so good question. So we actually part of our phase 3 expansion. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I, can't, I see my thing light up. Um, so we also have what's called our phase three infill project um, that's going on right now, where we're sort of beefing up uh, stations in sort of the, the core of, of the network. So as we build out, we find that we need more stations, more docks, more bikes um, in the core of the system. Um, so I think it'll take a while for us to kind of like come back and beef these up. Um, and it takes, you know, a couple, like a year plus. Um, to kind of really get like good ridership data on, you know, travel patterns, like what people are doing. I think COVID had a really big impact on travel patterns as well. Um, not in terms of like we saw like a skyrocketing in ridership, um, but in terms of like where people are riding to um, really changed. Um, so we're still kind of like exploring a lot of patterns. Um, in the network itself, but it's certainly top of mind that, you know, once we put a station down, we're not just like done, um, that we do sort of observe uh, how folks are using the program, how that's shifting, uh, and how nimble we can be as an agency um, to kind of redistribute uh, those docks um, where they're sort of needed the most. Um, so that's an ongoing process, so I don't have like a solid answer for you, but it's certainly something um, that we can look at, and I think you know, the, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So if, if people um, are really adamant about getting, you know, additional dockage, um, that's something that we can also respond to uh, as well. Um, board member Twain Joseph, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Steve. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the folks from the DOT for presenting this. Um, uh, I, I do appreciate that we are building out our bike network. Um, uh, however, my concerns from the past are still the concerns from for this meeting. And I have to say, I just wanted to put it on record. Um, it's very disconcerting to hear that DOT is not um, performing any sort of traffic study before placing these docks. Um, I think the questions and concerns around Beverly Road right now are a prime example of that. So I would strongly suggest that some sort of traffic study be done, however small or short it is. Uh, before you consider um, expansion into the rest of CB14, um, if possible. 
um, that's it, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, Steve, this is Glenn Wolin. I don't know how to raise my hand on the phone. Can I cut in here? Uh, can, can you wait until Dwayne's question is answered, and then you'll go next? Okay. Um, nice uh, I'd just like to say, um, I live on uh, Stratford Road between Beverly and Cortelio, and my wife and I are fairly regular bike riders. And Beverly is fairly narrow, not terrible uh, with cars, but not great. But with buses, which are much wider vehicles, I am very concerned about the idea of uh, of riding on Beverly alongside of buses. Uh, I think that's going to be quite dangerous. And that's my two cents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll certainly um, review this uh, a little more internally as well. Um, I think uh, we have one more board member with a hand up. Uh, Liz, Liz Dennis wanted to add something uh, from what you were asking earlier. Yeah, just some just based on some of the other feedback people were giving, um, wanted to note a couple things that like I would really like to see the city bike um, part of DOT work with the bike division. Um, right now, Beverly is one of the better of many terrible east west options, and people do already bike here. Um, the the neighborhood data shows that there's um, it, we have a, part of our we're in two different neighborhoods sorting for this, but part of the neighborhood is above average for biking, and part of the neighborhood is just at the city average for biking. Um, and this is a, a problem with or without city bikes, um, and it's it's going to continue to be a problem. Um, this this data is on is from the Department of City Planning. Um, but um, additionally, um, just wanted to note a couple of other things. It, you know, if, if stations are going to move away from some of the spots on Beverly, um, I know that there's a lot of holes, um, kind of, or not, maybe not holes, but there's not a lot of coverage towards Flatbush Avenue, which is a very big commercial street with a lot of destinations people would probably like to bike to. I'm noting especially that if there's a moving of the um, the um, bike um, stock that's on Beverly near King's Theater. King's Theater is a really, really, really popular destination people would love to city bike to. Um, I saw that when I was placing a comment on the feedback that there were many, many other comments saying that. So I just want to make sure that um, if there's any shuffling, that that is still like something that will be, you know, hopefully within a, a, under a block of walking because, you know, people would love to to get there that way. Um, thank you so much. Or, yeah, we do have uh, a few stations uh, along Beverly, and not along Beverly, but like nearby King Theater. Um, again, it's, you know, that particular stretch of Flatbush is particularly challenging with, you know, um, like different utilities, um, et cetera. But we can certainly sort of take, take a second look and look at, um, you know, if there's any way to like beef up the uh, network there um, if we can shift away from Beverly um, or if there's like additional uh, equipment that we can um, use to kind of beef up that that area uh, around King Theater because we also anticipate it being a very popular uh, destination as well. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question in the chat before that asked, has City Bike conducted a usage or dock analysis that looks at docking trends? And is there truly a need for so many stations, if you want to uh, respond to that? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think ongoing, we always kind of um, are reviewing our ridership patterns. Um, but what we really find, um, you know, it's not a, it's not a necessarily like a, a one size fits all. Um, so station sizes vary tremendously, um, you know, throughout the service area. In this community, we're looking at stations that are about, you know, 20 to 23, um, you know, docks, which is more on the smaller side, where if, if you're looking at like the core of Manhattan, we have stations that on average are around 50 docks, um, you know, and the larger ones are closer to 200 docks. Um, so really a highly variable um, degree of like station sizes um, and even density. Like, so in the core areas, we have, you know, maybe two stations, um, or like the 28 square miles, usually sort of our rule of thumb. Um, and that really helps um, create a um, that's reliable, convenient. We really wanna make sure that folks aren't walking, you know, more than three to five minutes, um, three to five minutes, um, you know, when they're in the service area. And I think 
that is the key to why this program has been so successful in this city. We find in cities that don't have this level of density that they get lower usage um, and they're not as um, not as convenient for um, residents. Um, Mark, I see you've had your hand up for a while. Uh, thank you for your patience. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I want to echo what some others have said about uh, the bike network in this area. I'm surprised to see that there was no information about any plans to expand the bike network, particularly in the east west direction. But also, like, there's only two up down uh, north south uh, bike lanes in that area. And I think that could be improved upon as well. And I think installing new uh, city bike docks is a perfect time to think about how the bike network should be expanded. Are, are there any plans? That... Um, yeah, I think there are some plans with 14. So I, while I, you know, coordinate with the bike unit, um, I am not a, like, I, I don't have, you know, intimate details, um, perhaps Diana or Claudette. Um, have has better information about some of like the more the plans uh, that folks are getting ready to implement in 2023 or 2024. Um, but we can certainly take this uh, feedback back to the the bike group and and reinforce that east to west uh, connection that you're talking about here. And to go back to Lisa's point, this is Diana from the BBCO office. We're definitely take everyone's suggestions and feedback uh, on the need. On the needs that the community board are stating, and um, and I can understand the the bit of confusion that um, constituents have, kind of overlapping city bike with with the bike network. I I understand we see it as a as an entire ecosystem. However, D, DOT does separate it because of the logistics and and the expertise that is needed on those two separate fields. So um, Lisa's been doing a great job, and I know she's she's she completely supports the expansion of city bike stations, and I'm I'm glad that you know we have some support on tonight. We appreciate that. Josh Campbell, uh, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in on that a little bit because I I I, I want um, members of the community to know that um, I did ask DOT's bike network um, unit to be with us tonight, and and they hedged because they said they don't have a a plan ready to present. Um, and and DOT and I sort of respectfully disagree about the order of operations when it comes to community input. I feel like they should come to the community and hear the insights and um, and the shared experience from community members who are on their bikes and. On, on the streets of our community in order to use that information to inform a plan and then come to us with a plan. A DOT likes to have a plan ready first. So um, so our, our, our sort of compromise tonight is that um, the uh, Deputy Borough Commissioner Claudette Workman is listening in on this. Um, Diana Soriano is our day-to-day -day liaison and they will be taking um, information gathered from this conversation back, and I'll keep working on this idea that they should be a part of all of the conversations, even before they have a plan. Um, so thanks. The clarification, Sean, um, next, uh, person, uh, Chase Flick, uh, go ahead. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, I just wanted to say I'm really excited about this expansion. It's really important to have this infrastructure in our neighborhood. Um, and I wanted to echo kind of two related sets of comments um, that I think a lot of folks have raised. The first is, um, for me, I think the most important thing is to have enough docks. And I don't in any way want to downplay the importance of the um, having safe bike lanes and, and the coordination of those lanes with the city bike infrastructure. Um, but just in terms of the way I use city bike, um, I'll walk a couple of blocks. If there isn't a bike, I will walk on the sidewalk if I feel like there's not a safe place to ride. Um, but the most frustrating thing is if there isn't a place to get a bike at all or a place to dock it. And so I think having enough docks, um, especially given the edge effect, um, is I think for me something as a frequent city bike user. Um, I currently will like walk 20 minutes to, to get a bike at the edge of the park because that's how far away I live. Um, it's not ideal. Um, and I guess I wanted to ask, sort of in terms of the edge effect, um, a lot of our neighborhood is downhill from much of Brooklyn and getting to Manhattan. And I, I wonder whether that exacerbates the problem of the rebalancing and if um, the sort of 
downhill uphill kind of pattern of, of commuting usage is something that's being taken into account in thinking about the number of docks that's appropriate um, for CB14. Thank you. Thanks. No, I think those are all really great points and you are a outlier in terms of how you are willing to walk. So it shows your dedication um, and we appreciate it. Um, so it, I, I agree. Like, I think the edge effect is, is really difficult. I think for uh, DOT, we kind of knew this second phase of expansion was going to kind of come quickly after we had already put down a few stations in 14. Um, so we're hoping that will alleviate some of those issues that you're seeing. Um, but again, like we'll on, on an ongoing basis, like continue to evaluate, um, you know, the needs here. Um, we can also on our end, like pressure lift to kind of do a little bit more rebalancing efforts um, over here. And I, as like avid city bike riders, I'm sure you know about um, the angels program I know throughout the years, but Still a great way to like either get points. Um, uh, so, you know, I certainly will take all of this feedback back. Um, I understand how difficult and frustrating it can be to live at the edge. Um, as somebody who has lived at the edge of the program area before, um, knowing how cute those those pain points can be, we have certainly tried to beef up the sizes. Um, particularly uh, along the border as much as we could. Um, but knowing that we do have some extra equipment and hearing all of this like positive feedback um, about wanting to get more, we can certainly explore even adding stations here um, if that's something that the board would be supportive of. Um, next, uh, board member Fluencia Chang Ajeda, uh, you have your hand up. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for your presentation. Question, how many parking spaces does each dock take away? Um, it's, it's dependent um, on the, the particular details of the site. So obviously we know that parking is uh, a great concern for a lot of community members. Um, so where possible, we'll try to sneak into what we call like daylighting or NSA um, areas where we can kind of minimize that parking. Uh, take, but we'll we'll see anywhere from like two to three spots for um, each station uh, location in the road bed. But as I said, that's like variable um, based on, you know, the road configuration um, that we did see. Um, I would highlight that like about 50% of the stations proposed here tonight are in the on the sidewalk, um, which is a much higher um, proportion of sidewalk stations to road bed. Um, that are in other communities, and that really is just a function of you guys have big fat sidewalks, <laughs> and so we were able to take advantage of that in certain areas. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Dwayne Joseph, did you have another uh, question or comment? Yeah, just a, a, a question um, around the, I think, um, um, Forgive me. Around the dock, the, the docking station replenishment of the bikes. I thought City Bike regularly went uh, replenished stations with bikes by shifting them around. Do they do any sort of assessment or study, um, especially along the edges um, where Liz mentioned, like there's sometimes often not enough bikes after usage, uh, like during rush hour periods? Uh, do they do studies to see like which stations should be replenished on a more regular basis? Yeah, I mean, rebalancing is an issue that, you know, we work with Lyft on to try to try to solve. It is um, sort of, it is a beast. Um, and I think there are some priorities to get um, some critical pain points, like within certain other parts of the system. But we certainly hear uh, that the edge effect um, is a real um, real concern for a lot of for a lot of users, um, and I think we can help uh, reprioritize some of lift, um, you know, rebalancing efforts um, in some of those uh, spaces that you're talking about uh, to help minimize that edge effect um, that you're talking about. But yes, uh, lift does regularly uh, rebalance bikes, uh, and you know we can continue to pressure them um, to work in this community uh, even more. Thank you for that answer, and also thank you for teaching me a new term. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, 
community member Jeffrey Thomas. You have your hands up. You have your hand up. Uh, hi. Yes. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. I'm very excited about it as someone who is also just past the edges of the network. Um, one question I had on the uh, question a few people asked about Beverly. Um, if I remember correctly from your map, the stations aren't exactly on, I think it's Argyll and Rugby, which are the two north-south bike lanes. Uh, I, when I first saw that, uh, I didn't actually think about you know, biking Beverly. I've tried it. It's been a mistake every time I've got, gone east-west on Beverly. I would use it when biking north south, um, sort of going, you know, somewhere and then taking a quick turn and uh, docking the city bike there. Uh, I'm curious if there's a reason why the uh, specific uh, locations aren't on the streets with the bike lanes, uh, or I think also East 18th is the other uh, doesn't have a bike lane, but is one of the uh, easier connections on the other side. Uh, so if uh, I think if you can make it so it's the stations are closer to the north south routes that people are using it would probably mitigate a lot of the effects and the sort of unintentionally encouraging people to bike a block or two down Beverly to Dr. Mike. Yeah, and I think, you know, for the most part, we do try to make sure, especially at those intersections where you're seeing, you know, two bike lanes um, connect with one another to try to make sure that we complement those. Um, it could be, and we can take a second look at those, um, but I, for the most part, like a lot of times it's like, it's just curb cuts, it's, you know, um, hydrants, uh, other considerations, maybe there's like utilities in the roadbed um, that are not like, you know, don't completely like jump out to the eye, but like make it technically non-viable. Um, as I mentioned, this community was particularly challenging to find, um, you know, space in the roadbed uh, specifically because of, you know, primarily um, curb cuts. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for taking that into consideration. Sure. Uh, Jackson Blair, you have your hand up. Yes, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Wonderful. Thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it brief. I'd like to add add my uh, appreciation for the expansion of the network in the area. And uh, at the same time, uh, add my concern over uh, the safety issues at Beverly. The end question, I know you don't have your uh, colleague from DOT, but the, what is the current stance on Sharrows? You know, my understanding is that those are actually less safe than no bike lane. And so I'd be very interested in uh, the plan area and how that connects with the expansion of the network into the area, in particular on Beverly. And I, I live right there as well, have children, and it's a harrowing experience you know, to go like one or two blocks on it to try to get someplace safer. Um, I'll let Diana um, or Claudette uh, discuss the share um, because that's not a, that's not something that I'm familiar with. I'm not familiar with the location, but I have made a note of it. Um, and thank you for expressing your concern. Great, thank you. Um, thanks. The, uh, the last person I see who has her hand up is uh, Victoria. Go ahead, Victoria. Hi. Um, I just, first of all, I want to say I am unbelievably excited that city bikes are finally coming to my neighborhood. I'm on that little corner right where um, Caton Avenue and Linden Boulevard intersect, and I saw a little orange triangle on that little plaza thing and i was just like hooray finally i don't have to walk 20 minutes to get to a city bike which is about what it is now so i'm incredibly excited about that so thank you um i also wanted to ask and i i i'm pretty sure i'm asking outside of this community district but how far east are you planning to put the docks and i apologize because i know this probably isn't the right thing but i was one of the big things i was kind of looking at when when i was doing the um that interactive map thing was like how far east can we go especially where there's like very little to no subway service kind of little to you know no bus service um like how far east is this going to go and again i know it's outside of this district so i apologize but i was just curious since we're here and i have your ear no of course um so we're gonna go further east um into cv 17 and that east border is going to be utica 
um, and it's going to go along, obviously, in 14, it's along Cortelyu um, Road, and then it's going to extend over to Utica. Um, and that's going to be our eastern border uh, there in Brooklyn. Um, and so that's uh, where that, that border lies in 17. Um, and we're actually going to present to them next week. Uh, yeah, like I'm just over the over the border into 14, so I don't go. To, I haven't been to any of the 17 meetings, but it's good to know that they're kind of in the same, you know, process that we're doing. Um, and then I, I'm pretty sure this is, well, it's been said about 15,000 times already, but I want to reiterate that I, I'm a very experienced bicyclist. I've been riding in the city for 20 some odd years, and I do not feel safe. Um, so I just want to re-emphasize how much we need protected bike lanes in this neighborhood and other neighborhoods um paint doesn't protect you shadows are garbage sorry <laughs> um but so i just i really just want to re-emphasize like you know we need we need something that's safe because we can't rely on i mean and this isn't a knock against drivers but like mistakes happen like you know i'm not saying all drivers are out to like run you over but like mistakes can happen and if it does, like somebody loses their life. So, I, you know, I just really want to reiterate the point that we need better infrastructure to protect everybody, like bicyclists, people walking, even drivers. So, um, but again, thank you so much for your presentation and thank you for coming to this neighborhood finally. Yay. Thanks, Victoria. We're excited. All right, great. Well, thank you to uh, DOT for presenting. Um, We'd encourage that uh, any additional uh, points on uh, bike lanes uh, in 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 CB14 and in our network uh, bring back to DOT. Um, but we appreciate this uh, presentation on uh, the proposed city bike expansion. Uh, that was very informative, and uh, you know, I'm glad that uh, lots of people got the questions answered tonight. So thank you, DOT. Thank you for all your support and all of your really great. Great, thanks. Um, okay. So I think um, the other, the only other thing on the agenda was new business. Uh, Ed, did you have anything you wanted to uh, raise before we close this out? Yeah, I'm gonna just share with everyone uh, just uh, this link, and, and I'll just uh, just briefly summarize. Um, so this past Monday, I attended uh, Prospect Park's uh, Drive safe, uh, Safety Study presentation. So the Prospect Park Alliance um, conducted a, a safety study of the Prospect Park Drive. Um, uh, they hired Sam Schwartz and uh, who presented uh, this uh, this study um, that was designed to address safety issues on the Park Drive, um, given the uh, increased usage by uh, pedestrians, runners, cyclists, um, and DOT also uh, will be uh, piloting these proposed changes. Um, and I, I do want to note um, this is an 18 month pilot, and and uh, they will be starting to mill. Uh, they'll start to mill um, the the uh, in, in certain sections. So uh, starting the night. Uh, so I believe weather permitting starting on Monday, March uh, 13th uh, at the park circle. And you can find more information in the link that I shared in the chat, but um, they're anticipating that this is a process that would take about five weeks. Um, and this would happen overnight uh, where they would be resurfacing uh, and milling the, the roadway uh, along park drive from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. And uh, trying to find the other notes so um yeah uh so th for three nights um they'll be milling and then for two nights they'll be uh paving that same section so over, i believe so monday through friday um they fix one section and then uh park users will have access uh and it won't affect uh, the usage during the weekend so um you can see uh, better pictures and diagrams uh, on uh, the Prospect Park Alliance's website that we're running this, uh, this pilot. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Thanks, Steve. Great, thanks, Ed. Um, relatedly, I, I attended the um, 
Brooklyn Bus Network uh, redesign meeting um, that was for Board 14. There are actually two presentations. Uh, I think that was like two weeks ago. Um, I'll post the link on the in the chat. Um, so that um, there were some board members who attended um, and had some good comments. Uh, there was some resistance stated about um, moving the express buses from Quartel U to Beverly. Um, there was support expressed for, uh, I believe, a new bus lane, uh, a new bus route that's going from Kensington to JFK. I forget if it's the B55 or the B15, it's something like that. Um, so, uh, but if you have, if you aren't familiar with the bus redesign proposals, uh, feel free to check out the link. There's an area to submit comments. If there's anything that you notice that impacts you that, um, you want to, uh, share feedback on, um, Liz Denny's, uh, you have your hand up. I just had a question for Ed. I didn't, um, I didn't see a lot of information about this when I had read through the prospect park, um, drive redesign, um, or repaving and so forth. Um. Do you know if they'll be repaving it in like, is there a reason they didn't consider repaving like half the roadway and the other half of the roadway um, like they would for like major street arteries instead of um, just, you know, can, keeping a, a, an essential um, bike and walk route like out of commission for potentially many weeks? Um, I honestly don't know. I, I, I think just if you have, have a chance, I would look through their website. And so I, just I, I know it's starting from the park circle at, at the south part, um, working along the eastern part of the park. Um, but I, I I honestly don't know like just the rationale behind like um, what you're asking. No, that's okay. I just I didn't know. You know, I, I, the parks hasn't. You know, they didn't present maybe as much as they might have at your meeting. So I appreciate your your clarifying. Thanks. <laughs> And Liz, let me jump in too, because if there's any questions that you want, I can field them to to uh, Deborah Kirshner at Parks. There was a lot of um, feedback on that meeting that passed through my inbox today. So I know she's fielding questions. I'd be happy to um, pass that along and, and get you an answer. Yeah, I, I think we would definitely like to know if there's a way that they can repave it that doesn't put it out of commission. You know, I know that fewer people bark after dark, but as someone who often bikes that loop after dark, um, especially particularly for transportation and not just recreational reasons, I see a lot of other people doing that as well. Um, and, you know, I think it would be, you know, given that there's no, um, given there's still no bike lane along Ocean Avenue, there's not like a good alternative um, to that that loop. So um, for for safety reasons, I think it would be helpful if they could try to figure out a way to to pave it without pu fully putting that whole stretch out of commission for a while. Um, would really appreciate that follow up. Thanks, Sean. I just want to also add that I use Prospect Park as a transportation uh, route all the time. So if it's going to be closed for five weeks, that'll be problematic. I guess I'll have to figure out how to bike up Prospect Park uh, Southwest. So I, I do want to clarify it's a sec check the section to section. So that I believe it, it's five separate sections, um, not all at once. But I I don't know if the website has like a, a clearer picture of what that would look like. But um, so it, it it will be week by week increments, not the entire like uh, what is highlighted. Um, is my understanding. I mean I'm. I'm just confused on like, I don't know if you have the answer, but because like my usual routes going from a uh, park circle all the way up to Grand Army Plaza, which goes through that entire section. So if like only one section is being worked on, like, is there a detour I have to take or is it just not possible? I don't know. I would have to defer to DOT, but I would imagine that they would have to have some sort of detour for members of the public. I'll see if I could get them at DOT and the Alliance perhaps um, to to come join a transportation committee meeting um, prior to the start of this project to get some of these questions answered. So um, thanks for raising them. Great. Uh, it, just to clarify, it's also only at night, correct? Yes. So starting at 8 p.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, AM per the uh, Prospect Park Alliance's website. Yeah. Yeah. And so also just maybe making it a little later would help. I, I also have ridden it at night, but as it gets a little later, it gets, it does get very sparse, uh, you know, as you go another hour or two 
after that, it really does tail off. Uh, Victoria, you have your hand up. I do. Um, since uh, Sean, you are taking questions to DOT, um, I also just want to say that I do use the park to commute to work, um, like Liz said, and um, not for recreation. Like this is how I get to and from work. So if I'm more I mean, not more worried, but like, I'm just concerned that if they mill this, like mill the roadway and it stays like that for weeks, which when it's outside of the park, that generally seems to be what happens. Like when they did Parkside, it was milled for about a month before they paved it. So, um, and it's not great to ride on. So, um, you know, like, and the same with Vanderbilt, when they milled Vanderbilt, it was like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And I was like, this is a crappy commute <laughs> because of this. Um, so yeah, like everybody else yeah, is saying, I'll like, are there alternatives? Are they, could they do like, I think like Liz had said, like one half of the roadway and then the other, just so there's at least some smooth pavement to commute on while they're doing this work. I mean, you know, great that they're doing it overnight, but if they leave the road milled, you know, for the next four or five days, whatever weeks, then it's not going to be amazing. So, um, okay, so I appreciate you bringing this to them for us. Sure. I don't know if it's on the regular million paving schedule or if it's a, its own special project, which might allow them to, to um, decrease the time between. It's the same group. The millers are the pavers and the pavers are the millers. Um, but uh, so I'll find out or, so, or I'll bring them here. To Sean, I, I do think it is a specialized project. They're, since yeah, they're dedicating three sense. days to milling and then the following two days, like repaving, um, I think that they just want to tighten that schedule as much as possible based on the presentation I saw. Okay, good. That's helpful. Thanks, Ed. I'll review it and I'll talk to Deborah. Thanks. Sean, we can discuss that tomorrow as well. We'll figure it out, okay? All right. Well, uh, thanks again to DOT for presenting. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, thank, thanks for community members for your, for your interest and uh, let you know when the next uh, transportation committee meeting is and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the board meeting this coming Monday, I believe. Yep. So, uh, yeah, everyone have a good evening and appreciate everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good evening. Good night. Thank you. Good, good night, everyone. Good night, Alvin. Good night. Sean. Good night, everybody.